Hi, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for assisting to this uh, webinar. Uh, I don't know if you heard me or not, but I, I assume that yes. Um, the idea is to start uh, the process in one or two minutes, but uh, previously to that, I am going to present to our speaker, who is uh, Jose Ramon Sempere. Jose Ramon Sempere is a uh, um, um, uh, has a great experience in the uh, rubber industry with more than 20 years uh, working in different formulation formulation in rubber, mainly in MBR and SBR. Uh, and now uh, I, uh, he's working in Avanzare for the last uh, three years. Uh, his activity is focused mainly in anti-static and, and other related, but uh, he can uh, show in the following uh, half hour more or less, uh, a view of the full uh, the grade of the additive that we are commercializing in the uh, field of RABA. Um, at the end of the, I assume that uh, during the process, uh, many of us uh, uh, want to make some question. The idea is that we have a chat uh, at the at the, uh, at the bottom of the of your, uh, of your screen in which you can uh, write uh, the question that you want and at the end of the of this webinar uh, my colleagues uh, can read some of this uh, webinar and uh, can uh, answer uh, your question uh, in addition uh, the um, webinar will be recorded and uh, in in a short uh, uh, future, uh, the uh, webinar will be put in our uh, Avanzare channel, uh, YouTube Avanzare channels, to be uh, um, uh, available for uh, whatever person. Uh, okay, uh, in this case is uh, enough. Uh, Jose, you can start whenever you want, okay? Thank you very much to everyone for coming. Thank you, Javi. Welcome, everyone. As Javi said, Today is another chapter of Avanzares webinar. In this case, it's related to, to our solutions for, for rubber and, and rubber compounds. Okay, we are going to start. Uh, today, I, I would like to, to talk about our additives and solutions uh, like graphene, uh, anti-static additives, uh, anti-counterfighting, metallic and, and magnetic tracer, chemical tracer, density amplifier, another kind of solution like flame retardants, anti-blooming, odorless, or antibacterial. Okay, we are going to start this webinar talking about anti-static agents for, for rubber. First, a little introduction about the, the conductivity range and the technologies that you can find in the, in the market and, and where Avanzare tried to, to place his additives. Okay, if we talk about the different technologies that we can find, we can find the black systems focus on graphene or carbon solutions that give you a conductivity range down 10 to the power 5 ohms in resistivity and on the other side we can find the non-permanent additives that migrate to the surface and the resistivity range it's more or less around 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 8 but this behavior disappears with the time. Avanzare tried to, to place its additives in between these two solutions in the range of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 10 ohms and try to have the main advantage advantages sorry of each solution permanent for the size of uh, carbon solutions and colorless for the size of the migration one. 
to to choose a, an anti-static agent, it's preferred to to uh, to answer some question for conductivity, conductivity range. Of course, the conditions of use is if because the humidity uh, has an important role in the conductivity, mainly in the migration one. If you need a colorless or non-colorless solution, or permanent or non-permanent solution. As I told you, with uh, avanzar ionic conductors, is the technology that is usually made or additives, they are colorable, permanent, not depend on the humidity, and the range is between 10 to the power 5, 6 to 10 to the power 10 ohms. Also, Avanzare has uh, solutions based in graphene and another nano carbon structure to allow to get conductivities down 10, 10 to the power 6 ohms. The, the main characteristics of uh, ionic conductors from, from Avanzare is first is permanent and allows to, to give dissipative or ESD levels. So the range of conductivity is between 10 to the power 6, 5 to 10 to the power 10. It's colorless, allows you to, to have rubber compounds in whatever color you want. The dosage usually is low, it's cost effective. The, the impact in the mechanical properties is, is lower. Of course, it's no, no migration. You, we don't, you don't have the blooming problems with our anti-static additive. And we have, depends on the type of additive you can find in solid or liquid mainly. Uh, also, we have a, a food grade compliance additive. And one key point that we always keep in mind is that the, at the end, the polarity of the polymer has a great influence in the conductivity. So when we have a polar polymer like MBR, the conductivity is better and we need less quantity to, to achieve our, our target. Okay. In the in this slide, we we are going to review different addi additives from from Adam Avanzare. Avanstatic rubber is one of our additives. It's uh, it's powder. The dosage is between one to five phR, and this product is only available in Europe. We also have another additive for less polar rubbers like APDN or SBR, is an static SBR APDM. Later, I'm, I'm going to, to focus more in this, in this additive. An static 455 FDA is our solution uh, for food content application. It could, this additive could work in MBR, SBR, APDM. And finally, we have three different additives in liquid form. The first three one, they are solid, they are in powder form. And we have these three additives, Avanestatic Plus, Plus Wrap, and MBL535. They are liquid and they are focused um, in MBR and mixture with MBR SBR. In the case of Avanestatic Plus Rub and Avanestatic MBR535, or our Avanestatic Plus, the spectrum of rubber is bigger. You can use in natural rubber, CSM, of course, MBR or SBR, and adds like a plasticizer. I would like to focus in, in a couple of our additives. In first, I I would like to show you the advantages of an static MBR535. An static MBR535 is uh, designed to 
for color and clear rubber formulation and to get dissipative OESD uh, behavior. This additive it could be used in MBR, MBR SPR, MBR PVC. It's focusing in MBR and mixture with MBR. It's permanent, it's not toxic, it's cost effective with uh, you need a low dosage between two to eight PHR to get different levels of conductivity. You, you can see in the in this upper graph the the behavior we are adding from two to a PHR in a in this kind of formulation with in this case is MBR with BR. And do it is in liquid form is easy to, to disperse. Another problem that I would like to focus today is amanestatic SBR EPDM. This product is most focused in non-polar, less polar rubbers like SBR, mixtures SBR, FBR, EPDM, natural rubber, and allows you also to get dissipative and ESD performance in this kind of formulations. It's a white powder, so it's valid for whatever color recipes, non-toxic, and it's a valid for sulfur or peroxide cross-linking. Uh, and this product has some key factors that we have to, to keep in mind to, to achieve our conductive objectives. Uh, first, the, we need that the recipe has some polarity. I mean, if you see this expression here, I would like to say that the polar part of the recipe, with polar part, I mean, for example, uh, the silica, in this case, the peroxide activator, or product, the sum of these uh, polar parts should be at least between three, three parts of polar parts of non-polar part by four parts of non-polar. With non-polar, I mean mainly PDM and the mineral oil. So for example, in this case, if you make this operation, it's around 0 0.78. And the resistivity that we get is around 600 mega ohms. How to, to achieve this? Maybe the high quantity of silica or the presence in peroxy cross liquid the activator, it helps you to achieve the, the conductivity. But also we have to keep in mind that depends on the type of uh, cross-linking, this, this product uh, could affect, in the case of the sulfur vulcanization, to the uh, acceler acceler sorry, acceleration system. And it's necessary to, to adjust the, the accelerators because when you add this product, increase the, the speed and it's possible to face some scorching problems with this product in sulfur vulcanization. On the other hand, when we have a peroxide cross-linking, this product consumes peroxide and it's necessary to increase the, the, quanti, the quantity of the peroxide to avoid problems with the mechanical properties. Some applications that we can find to, in the market to use these uh, additives, rollers, safety shoes, wheels, uh, dissipative fluorine, different types of mats, and another craft in the in the market that is needed like soles or or sheets. Okay. The next minutes I would like to to talk about graphene and the 
its applications in, in Rava. As you know, uh, graphene is a new material. Avanzare is producing graphene since, since uh, 15 years ago. In, in our portfolio, uh, we, can, we can find different grades of graphene and graphene nanoplatelets. In the case of the industrial applications, uh, we always promote our graphene nanoplatelets. It means that the number of layers is more than 10 layers, it's between 30 to, to 10 layers in this, in this case. Um, the characteristics of graphene are, uh, are focused in different parameters like the oxygen content, thickness, lateral size, uh, the defects over the surface, and, and the production method. And it means that depends on the grade, the properties of, of the graphene could be one or another. I mean, is for example, the a high number of defects in the surface is worse for the thermal conductivity, for example. In the right graph, you can, you can see different grades that we have in our portfolio and the main characteristics of each grade. Okay. In the case of the application of graphene in rubber, I would like to focus in electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity. Another type of uh, application like a gas barrier or fire or with fire retardancy. For if we now focus in electrical conductivity, the characteristics of these black solutions, one is the color, of course, black, the performance is permanent, and they are focused more in, in the conductive range lower than 10 to the power 6 ohms in resistivity terms. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the the addition of this additive, of this kind of graphene, uh, should be enough to get the percolation net. I mean, if we, if we see this graph, we start to, to add graphene to our rubber compound and nothing happens. Then when the percolation net is created, the resistivity drops dramatically and we have then the conductive behavior. To get this, is, as I said, is mandatory to, to add some quantity of this uh, additive. Graphene is in powder form, so sometimes it's unfriendly to, to use it. So this way we, we develop some master batch in different matrix to, to help in this way to use graphene in, in rubber applications. Is the, the or conductive master batch are based in graphene and, and other carbon nanostructures. The, they are in pellet form, black color. One advantage is, is uh, no, the, uh, no dust in the, in the, during the use of graphene. You can achieve conductive and ESD performance also. It's a polyaromatic hydro hydrocarbons analogen free. And the impact in the properties is, is quite low and is stable in, the, in different humidity conditions. For this purpose, we, we have three different master batches, Avan GRP505. This is for, you can achieve conductivities in the range of 10 to the power two. I mean, it's like uh, less than 1,000 ohms. The dosage, of course, in this case is high, is 
the suggested dosage is between 10, 15 to 50 percent. Also, we have another gray among GRP 700. In this case, it's more focused to, to get conductivities between 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 ohms, uh, with doses between 10 to 40 percent. You, these doses are big due to the necessity to get the percolation net, as I, I explained you in the last uh, slide. In the, in the case of extrusion process, uh, sometimes it's possible to, to see the, the skin effect. It means that sometimes the conductivity over the surface could be lost due to this uh, skin effect and because the, the percolation net is, is broken. Another grade of our conductive master batches is Aman GRP765. It's quite similar to the Aman GRP700. Here, for example, you can see an EPD and receive with the addition of uh, Aman GRP765. We can achieve a conductivity between 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 with doses higher than 25% of the master batch. And this is a application for EA Tech solutions, fittings, electronic packaging, whatever you need a uh, conductive behavior. Other property that uh, has graphene is to increase the thermal conductivity in this case of the of the rubber. This property also is permanent. In this case, uh, the main property of the, <coughs> sorry, the physical property most important for graphene is the lateral side. When we, ha we have graphene with high or bigger lateral side, is we have high thermal conductivity. On the other hand, it's black, so the colors are limited. And we have a couple of uh, solutions based in powder, in, graph in, in powder form. We call Avant Thermal Conductor 770 and 440. Here in this graph, in the right graph, we can see the, the performance when we are adding different doses of graphene. In this case, as, as you see, the thermal conductivity is increasing for the initial moment you are, we are adding graphene to the compound. Also, to, to have a more friendly product, we develop a thermal master batch. In this case, we call Lavan Thermal 440MB50. Also, it's based in graphene and it's in black pellets. Environmentally friendly because it's not as, it's also halogen and polyaromatic hydrocarbons free. And the impact in the properties, we try to, to make as lower as possible. Yeah, well, in the <clears throat> right table, we have some, some uh, sorry, some tests we, we made with this uh, Avant Thermal master batch. You can take a look and see the, that one thing that we have to keep in mind is with this solution based on graphene are black, but also uh, we have electrical conductivity at the same time. Uh, when we create the percolation net to get the electrical conductivity. So this is an, an important thing to keep in mind. Okay. In the case of the powder, I just I a few words is uh, black color, of course. The dosage more or less is between two three percent to sixteen percent to to see a uh, improvement in the thermal conductivity. As an I say, you is halogen free, polyaromatic is hydrocarbons free.
just to to avoid you know in one side the uh, the problem of the black color the problem if you need another color different to to black we we also have a thermal 300 in this case this additive is white it's not based in graphene i put this slide here because it's linked with the thermal property but it's not it's not based in graphene it's based on it's a mixture of different metallic oxys it's uh, white powder it's colorable and also uh, it hasn't any electrical transmission the percentage that we can use it's in the is high to to get the the conductivity for example you can see here with uh, with 40 percent we increase the the conductivity around six to seven times but also we can multiply by three the conductivity adding 30 percent in this case it's in a p but it's a uh, it's also valid for rubber uh, compounds okay um, graphene shows a synergistic effect with a standard flame retardants based in polyphosphate or flame retardants that has hydroxyl groups inside its molecules. So the way that uh, helps graphene to the flame retardancy is uh, in one hand increase the carbonaceous layer, the char, and reducing the, the dripping and also doing the thermal conductivity of the graphene helps to distributing the energy um, uh, fastly. This, as I say you, this synergistic effect is shown show in the, with polyphosphate, for example, or those flame retardants with hydroxyl groups. Graphene also can be used for gas barrier properties. For example, this is a, in this case, it's a latex ball with uh, improve the gas barrier property of the natural latex. The dosage is between two to 12% of uh, graphene to, to get this uh, behavior. Okay, now we we are going to to take a look in in other solutions for for rubber. In this case, I I would like to tell you uh, flame retardants, anti blooming, density amplifier, chemical tracer, metallic tracer, and and bio C and bio size. Sorry. First, uh, I would like to introduce you or avant fire group um, we always focus to to have friendly products and in the case of the flame retardants or flame retardants are allogen free antimonium free bromine compounds free uh, in the case of the flame retardant for rubber are valid for any color and we have a couple of products the first one is a Vampire 81, it's focused in MBR and SBR, as in is in the powder form. And we have another liquid product focusing in MBR that is a Vampire MBR 180. Uh, with this product, it's possible to use a Vampire GR8, it's the or flame retardant based on graphene that has a synergy, synergistic effect with or Avanfire 81 and, and Avanfire MBR 185. Another product that we have is the Amanesto Blooming 64. 
this product is focused to to use in non-polar rubber and tries to to avoid minimize the blooming problems of polar uh, molecules like uh, polar plasticizer, esterates of oxygen, of oxide, metallic soaps that is common to use in rubber formulations. It's a non-toxic additive. It's a value for whatever color. The impact over the physical properties is not too high. The, the usual dosage is between three to five pHR. And it's, uh, of course, as all or produce a rich compilance. Another product is Savan Steel 1890. In this case, this is a powder with high density that allows to amplify the density of the of the rubber for different applications like exercise weights. Uh, we have different range of this uh, type of product and we have we can customize the the density of the product it has a of course a corrosion and chemical resistivity is colorable and also is valid for food food grade applications another range of product that we have is a chemical tracer in this case, uh, this product is focused on anti-counterfeiting uh, solutions. We develop tailor-made solutions to, to know at the end if the rubber compound, rubber pieces is yours or not, and to avoid illegitimate claims. It's, of course, is one solution for one customer. It's like it adds like a fingerprint. The dosage is quite quite low, and it's uh, it's not only a qualitative purpose. Also, sometimes it's possible to develop quantitative solutions. I mean, uh, it's possible sometimes to know the amount of what your product is inside another in the final product, for example. Okay, the, the following product is the metallic tracer. The name is Avancey Detector. In this case, it's a stain, stainless alloy in, in a very thin powder form. And it's possible to, to detect by magnetic, X-ray, electrical methods. And it could be used in, in the food industry to, to detect contamination from utensils or, or food items made by rubber. It's of course, it's suitable for food contact applications. Uh, the, the base of this color is gray, pale gray. So uh, a lot of different type of colors are allowed to, to produce with this additive. It's over less, it's non-migratory. And compared with another solution that you can find in the market, the, the dosage is, is low. In this case, uh, we, we show you with different dosage. I, I mean, the, in, the, in the up chart, different dosage and different size of pieces. The quantity added and the size that it's possible to, to detect is true that is uh, under certain conditions because the type of detector, distance, and this kind of variables is, it has an effect in the, in the detection level. Uh, finally, I, I would like to talk some words about those biocide solutions. Avanzarin, in this case, uh, we are working with inorganic additives based in zinc and, and silver compounds. Uh, this product are compliance with European regulation and EPA certificate. And some grades are valid for, 
food content, food content applications. Our biocides are valid for a large spectrum of different microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, algae, and it's possible to get an elimination higher than 99.9%. In this way, I, I would like to, to talk a little more of Avancing Back is one of our biocide in powder, in powder form. It's a powerful biocide of uh, large spectrum. And it's a special formula to, to introduce in, in polymeric matrix uh, like the, the rubbers. The dosage is, uh, is low. The dosage needed is quite low to, to get a, a very good behavior. In this case, also the polarity has a, a important role. With, we have more polarity in the rubber. It's the, the final behavior of the biocide is better. This uh, biocide is allowed to to use in different rates of applications antifoliant products construction material preservatives fiber leather rubber film preservatives preservative for product during storage disinfectants algae dyes and not intended for direct application to humans or animals under the, the european rules Okay, just to show you some applications of the biocide from um, rubber, uh, I pour hand dry, hoses, rubber soles, rubber mats, we, this kind of application or a biocide are suitable for. Okay, finally, I would like to, to have some, some words about Avanzare. Avanzare uh, nowadays has two different plants. Uh, one of them are focused on our research and development facilities. We, we are an, an enterprise quite strong in research and development in terms of number of employees, because more than 50% of our employees are in, in research and development tasks. Uh, today, we are present all over the world. In, in Asia, we have a couple of persons in Vietnam, India, of course, Europe, and Mexico. Also, we have a physical presence. One of the strongest point of Avanzare is the capability to, to customize solutions for, for customers. And we, we are capable to, to do it because we have a certification lab in our facilities, a pilot plan, and, and a huge number of different types of testing machines to develop or Purpose. Okay, or technical capabilities is an equipment and facilities. As I say, you we we have a different types of equipment to to analyze and to develop our solutions. Uh, we also have a fire lab, ESD, microbiological lab, uh, the possibility to develop agent test, and so on. In the case of the microbiology, we, we have a lab and we, we can develop different types of tests like ISO 22196 or the Japanese industrial standard GSETA 2800. Uh, we also have the a testing and certification lab for FIA. 
and that's all thank you very much if you can if you have some some questions you can contact directly to me or uh, through the web page of avanzare thank you thank you very much Thank you very much, Jose, uh, for this uh, interesting webinar. Uh, I have received uh, many questions, some of them in the in the chat and another in the question and answer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to uh, send you some of them. And uh, if we have time, we can uh, come in every, everyone, OK? Uh, first. And uh, when you talk about, uh, Jose, uh, is, the mm -hmm. question is for you, eh? okay? Uh, when you talk about anti-static, which is the real difference between permanent and non-permanent? Uh, we are talking about the air or, or what? Okay, depends of the conditions. When, when we are talking about non-permanent anti-statics, the time is around one year, two years, but it depends a lot of the of the con, of the conditions that the piece, the final piece of the final product, is used. In the case of permanent anti-static, the behavior is stable during many, many, many years. Avanzare has uh, 16, 17 years, and we have pieces in our facilities from from that time that uh, show the the anti-static behavior. Okay. Uh, the same, the same guy as many times our customer talk about anti-static, but uh, we have no any data. Uh, how we can make the measurement or how we can prove the performance? Can Avanzare yeah. help or can Avanzare uh, can Avanzare help? Yes, of course. Yes, we 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 can make the measurements and also. Uh, we can show the way to to make to make this kind of measurements. The it's true that the test depends of the application. I mean, the way that you test, for example, a safety shoes is different than the way that you test a conductive or ESD fluorine application. But Avanzare can can help, of course. The ESD, okay. The anti-static behavior is between 10 to the power 5, 6 to 10 to the power 9. And the ESD in this case depends of the of the market. For example, in safety shoes, ESD is less than 35 mega ohm. In other markets, maybe it's, it means less than 100 mega ohms. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Uh, another one, uh, can Avanzare help with the receipt or developing uh, some receipts for the customer? How confidential is that? No, totally confidential. In this case, we we take a lot of care to, to don't disseminate the different receipts of the customers. And we, all, we always try to, to help uh, our customers developing receipts or or gives them some some advice, of course. Someone asks, uh, for example, it is a question directly of, of product, with two PHR of MBF 535, uh, how much do you achieve? I assume that it is talking about uh, conductivity. Yes. Um, for sure, less than uh, 1,000 mega ohms. Depends depends of the type of the recipe because, for example, if the plasticizer is uh, more polar or not, can help and to achieve less conductivity. But with two PHR uh, less than one thousand mega ohms and so, so until with, with two PHR in MBR you can get maximum seven five mega ohms. Seven five, no. Between seven five and one hundred. Yes, two. Oh, okay. In NBA, in NBA, in NBA. In, yeah. in, in NBA, ah, okay, 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 in NBA. Oh, yes. In another is completely different. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, 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 sorry. Ah, between between 75 to 100, Andres. more or less, depending oh. on your receipt. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, changes the, the word. Talking about graphene, which is the difference compared with carbon nanotube? Which is the advantage to work with, uh, with graphene? 
Oh, it's <laughs> a good question. Uh, the first one mainly maybe is the the price. The price of carbon nanotubes is quite quite high. The of course the the properties I are the same. Carbon nanotubes give you conducti conducti as well than than graphene. It's a uh, and maybe another bad point. Uh, compared carbon nanotube with graphene is that the, the the dust in this sense the carbon nanotubes are more unfriendly than than graphene the dust of the carbon nanotube flies a lot compared with graphene that flies also maybe this next question can help you more to focus on that with uh, we tried it several times with carbon nanotubes, but the dispersion and the problem with the toxicity in Europe stopped the project. Can graphene solve these problems? Yes, yes, because the maybe the process, processability is is higher with graphene. We, for example. Um, we add to to one memory to make a, a more than 40 45 percent of graphene inside the recipe with carbon nanotube it's quite hard to to get this high volume of additive inside the compound uh, next one which is the dosage idea for avancerbal additive oh, depends of the target mm. But it's true that from five, three, five PHR, you start to see an improvement in the thermal conductivity. But at the end, it depends of the of the target. Is it enough uh, to double the coefficient, the thermal coefficient, or, or you want to to multiply by three or by four? At the end, it depends of the of your application. But minimum, minimum, you need three, five PHR. Okay. Uh, someone, uh, I don't know which is the additive that they that they comment, but uh, in which step we solve at this additive uh, for processing? Uh, he's asking, for example, if we need to add at the beginning or uh, with the sulfur, with the accelerator, with the filler, in which part? For example, in the powder anti-statics, uh, you can add with the silica step. Uh, the rest of additives you can add with the processinites products. It's not, it's not a problem. Usually, these kind of additives, the processability are quite, is quite good. Okay, someone is uh, put hi. Uh, I would like to ask for more details about uh, graphene FR, uh, FR uh, which may work as uh, frame retardant, uh, which is the base. Which is the dosage of this material in comparison, for example, with ATH? We had to be used in really high doses. How dosage of ATH may be decreased? Okay. Uh, the dosage of the <laughs> the dosage of the graphene is, is not too high. Uh, maybe two PHR, three PHR is enough to to decrease the quantity of the main flame retardant. How maybe ten percent, seven seven percent? You can decrease the the quantity of the flame retardant. It helps. It's not a a panacea, but it, it helps to to reduce of the quantity with a little quantity of the of the flame retardant based on graphene. Yeah, we we are going to conclude with the last one because. Uh, uh, to the rest of the of the of the, uh, of the question, we can reply directly by email if you have. Okay. Uh, can you tell details of density amplifier? Uh, which is uh, in which product do you do you apply this 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 product this material? Uh, for example, in in ways for sport items, it's possible to to apply. Uh, me, 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 me. Maybe it's uh, in, in, in additive, uh, this additive, I, I am going to help you. Maybe this additive can help to uh, 
compare, uh, make the, the plastic like a uh, metal. For example, mm -hmm. in, in luxury chip or in uh, uh, in some, uh, for example, packaging of of mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, some um, special items. Yeah, some, some, some special mm -hmm. es, es, es un scream or something like this. Mm -hmm. It's yes. for uh, make a, a plastic more comparable with a with a metal. The the, mm -hmm. the, the aspect of the weight, uh, etc. Yes. And another application that I, I didn't told in the in the presentation is you can make a magnetic rubber. If you do put an iman, you can uh, catch the the rubber. This is another <laughs> another property. I know I, I see one of the one of these applications, for example, in a uh, indoors for, uh, yes, for, for airplane or for submarine but, or something like yeah. this that with a, a, a with a electric man mm -hmm. can uh, fix the close the door uh, hardly that uh, the standard the, the, standard the physical close, way yes physical way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, this is this, this is maybe this is important mm -hmm. okay uh, thank you very much uh, jose for this interesting meeting oh. uh, and to the rest uh, i would like oh wait I uh, know I am reading this one. Uh, uh, don't worry. I I I try to 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 replay you by by email to the rest of the of the people. Okay. Uh, thank you very much to everyone, and uh, see you in the next in the next webinar. Uh, yeah. uh, we have a next webinar uh, uh, next week, of weeks, uh, yes. about uh, a couple of weeks. Okay, yes. in, in talking about uh, plastic in this case. Uh, mm -hmm.